Welcome to EPG Partshala Lecture Series in Computer Science. This course is on operating systems. This module will learn what is meant by page replacement and what is the use of uh, page replacement algorithms. And in particular, in this module, we learn first in, first out page replacement algorithm and this problem of Bellady's anomaly. In the previous module, we learnt what is meant by demand paging. That is, in demand paging, the pages are brought into memory only when the pages are needed. A particular process can have many number of pages, but all the pages need not be present in, a, in the memory at the same time. It is enough only the pages which are used currently to be kept in the memory. Say for example, if you have a process which has got n number of pages, it is not necessary to allocate n page frames or n physical frames in the physical memory. It is enough to have only a few number of pages or few number of page frames that are allocated to this particular process. Suppose you have a process with 10 pages and at a particular time, if the process is using only half of the pages, then it is enough to have only 5 page frames in the physical memory for that particular process. And the remaining 5 pages need not be brought into the physical memory. So, because of this, the advantages will be you save I.O. That is, the pages are all kept in the secondary storage device in a disk. So, you need to bring the pages into the physical memory while execution and all the 10 pages need not be used at a particular time. You need to use only 5 pages and it is enough if you bring only the 5 pages and the time required to move the other 5 pages also into the memory is now saved because you do not move the next 5 pages into the memory. And because of this what happens? The place or the space occupied by this process in the physical memory becomes less and hence there is more space in the physical memory to accommodate more other processes. And hence because of that the degree of multiprogramming is increased. What is meant by degree of multiprogramming? The number of processes that can be kept in the physical memory at a particular time is called degree of multiprogramming. Now, because this one process occupies less number of physical frames in the physical memory, the remaining space can be utilized by other processes. Suppose I uh, take an example where you have 50 frames in the physical memory. Totally there are 50 physical frames or page frames in the physical memory and totally there are 10 number of processes say. And each of these processes has got 10 pages say. So, totally if you need to bring all the processes into the physical memory, then you need to have 10 into 10, you need to have 100 physical frames in the physical memory. But e for each of the process, all the 10 pages may not be active at a particular time. And hence, if it is enough to give each process only 5 pages, then you can accommodate all the 10 process pages into the physical memory. That is, see, you give each process 5 pages, totally there are 10 number of processes and hence all the 10 processes put together will need only 50 pages. And you can accommodate, you can accommodate all the processes in the physical memory. But now, the disadvantage is that you go for over allocation, that is, the all the space in the physical memory is now fully occupied with the pages of all these processes. There is no free space at all. So, at some particular time, if suddenly one process wants to bring in more number of pages or suddenly if one process is trying to access more number of pages, then what happens? Say a process tries to use all the 10 pages. Now, there are only 50 physical frames in the physical memory. 
and uh, 50 currently has been occupied by the pages of uh, different processes and one process now wants to increase. So, what happens? While you try to bring in the next 5 pages of this process, already 5 pages are allocated for this process. Now, it needs the other 5 pages as well and hence the 5 pages have to be brought into the main memory. What happens? A page fault occurs for the 5 pages. So, when page fault occurs for the 5 pages, you are tr you'll try to bring in the 5 pages from the secondary storage device into the main memory, but there is no space in the main memory to bring in these 5 pages or there is no free frame in the physical memory to bring in these 5 pages. So, how do you solve this problem? One thing what can be done is that you can decrease the degree of multiprogramming. That is, now currently you have accommodated the pages of 10 processes or if you try to reduce the number of processes that have been allocated memory, then you can get more space. So, rather than having the pages of 10 processes, you reduce the number of processes, maybe remove 2 processes. So, if you remove 2 processes, 5 plus 5, 10 pages will become free in the physical memory. So, there is one solution that is by reducing the degree of multiprogramming or by reducing the number of processes that are using the physical memory, you can avoid this problem, you can get more free frames. The second way to uh, overcome this problem is that or the second way to find out free frames or to bring in more free frames, you, have, you can go for page replacement. That is, when you are trying to bring in a page from the secondary storage device into the main memory, what you do? You try to pick up a victim frame from here and bring it out and bring in the required page. It just shows an example of over allocation. You have two users, user 1 and user 2. User 1 has got 4 pages, user 2 also has got 4 pages and this is the page table for user 1 and this is the page table for user 2. The physical memory has got the pages uh, H, load M, J, but this last page of this user 1 is not kept in the physical memory. But you have a copy of that page in the secondary storage device. And for user 2, you have pages A, B, D, E and of these 4 pages A, D and E are kept in the physical memory. The page B is not present in the physical memory, it is kept in, kept in the secondary storage device. Now, when you look at the page table for this user 1 and for user 2, for user 1 you see that corresponding to M which is not present in the physical memory an invalid bit is set and for B, uh, for user 2 you find that the invalid bit is set. So, here you see that all the physical frames or all the page frames in the physical memory are fully occupied. There is no place for bringing in a particular page. Suppose suddenly if there is a reference to this page M in user 1, then it will try to look into the uh, page table, it finds that it is invalid and then the OS will check whether it is actually valid or invalid. It will check if it is present in the secondary storage device, it finds that it is in the secondary storage device and it will try to bring it into the physical memory, but now there is no free frame here. So, we need to go for page replacements that is we need to make some place free in this physical memory. That is some page here in the physical memory should be moved out to the secondary storage device and your required page that is M should be brought into the physical memory. So, we will see what happens when this page replacement is done. So, earlier we learned how a page fault service routine is serviced and that service routine is modified to include page replacement. So, the steps that are involved in this page replacement is that you find the location of the desired page on the disk. So, in the earlier example we saw that page M has to be brought into the physical memory. So, first the operating system finds out where this page M is kept in the physical memory in the disk and then it will find a free frame in the physical memory. If there is a free frame, it will use it. If there is no free frame, it will use a page replacement algorithm 
to select a victim frame. So, once a victim frame is chosen, that victim uh, frame contents, the contents in the victim frame, that page should be written to the disk. And then you will change the page table and the frame tables accordingly. Then you will read the desired page, that is say that page M in the example that we saw is copied or is read into the free frame that is newly freed. And then you update the page and the frame tables saying that this particular page has been brought into the memory and this frame is occupied by this particular page now which has been moved in and then you will restart the process. So, the survey page service routine that we had seen earlier is slightly modified to accommodate this page replacement algorithm. But if there is no free frame, then you find that two page transfers are required. That is, you need to select one victim frame in the physical memory, move that out to the secondary storage device and then move in the one from the secondary storage device into the main memory. So, one should be moved out and one should move in. So, this will increase the time that is required for servicing the page fault and because of that, the effective access time is also increased. So, to reduce this uh, moving out and moving in, we use something called a modify bit. Say you try to select one frame in the physical memory and you try to move it out and then move the required page. So, this page that is moved out or copied out to the swap device, if it has not been modified at all after having brought into the physical memory, then uh, what what is the point in copying this again back to the secondary storage device? There is no need for copying this to the secondary storage device because it has not been modified after having brought into the physical memory. So, this one copying out is reduced. So, for that to know whether this page has been modified or not, a bit is kept which is called the modify bit or the dirty bit. So, this bit is you set whenever the page is modified and whenever you try to select a victim page to move out, you also check if the modify bit is set. If the modify bit is set, only then it is modified. Only if the modify bit is set, you copy it or you swap it out. Else, if the modify bit is not set, then you do not have to copy this outside. You can bring in the required page as such into this particular place in the physical memory. So, just this pictorially shows what happens during a page replacement. You see this in this page table entry, you have frame number F which is valid and you have another frame O which is invalid. So, what is done? You are trying to uh, swap out this victim page, this frame number F is the victim page and that is swapped out and then you swap in the desired page into this particular location and you have to change the valid invalid bit accordingly. So, now there are two problems to solve to implement this demand paging. One is the frame allocation algorithm, the other is a page replacement algorithm. What is this frame allocation algorithm? When you have man number of processes in the memory, you should decide how many frames you can allocate to each process. So, you have in the example that we have seen, you have 10, uh, 10 processes and totally there are only 50 frames. So, if you are equally dividing the frames among the processes, then each process will get 5 frames each. But this may result in over allocation can lead to lot of page replacement. So, what you can do is you can just reduce the number of pages that you can allocate for each process and or you can even reduce the degree of multiprogramming. So, this problem is called this frame allocation algorithm that is deciding how many frames you can allocate for each process. And the second problem is this page replacement algorithm that is whenever a page replacement is required that is you do not find a free frame in the physical memory, you need to bring in a page. So, you need to replace a page. Which of the pages in the physical memory do you select to be replaced or how do you select the victim frame which should be replaced? 
So, for this you have a number of algorithms uh, which are called the page replacement algorithms. And we learn in this particular module, we learn one such page replacement algorithm and we will understand what are the advantages and disadvantages of that page replacement algorithm. So, when you are looking at page replacement algorithm, uh, we need to select a page replacement algorithm which will finally result in the lowest page fault rate. And you evaluate the algorithm by running it on a string of memory references, on a sequence of memory references and computing the number of page faults on that particular string of memory references. Say for example, how you generate the string of memory references, say you have this is the following address sequence say 0122, 122, 435, 123, 511 and so on. Suppose the size of the page is 100 bytes, so the process will be divided as in blocks of 100 bytes. So, 0 to 100 will be in 1 uh, or so 0 to 99 will be in uh, 1 page, then 100 to 199 will be in this second page etc and so on. So, if it is uh, 0 to uh, 99, then the page number will be 0 and the offset will go from 0 to 99. If it is 100 to 199, the page number will be 1 and the offset will go from 1 to 99 and so on. So, uh, 0 to 99 and so on. So, uh, suppose if the address that is generated is 122, then it means that it is, page, it, in, it is in page number 1 and the offset is 22. So, we just generate uh, a string such that that refers to the page numbers, uh, page numbers. So, 122 corresponds to page number 1, 435 corresponds to page number 4 and so on. So, now we will see how uh, page replacement is done in first in first out. And before that, uh, whenever uh, you are increasing the number of frames, you expect the number of page falls to come down. So, this is a graph that shows the page falls versus the number of frames. So, when you have say a certain number of frames in the physical memory, say you have 10 number of frames in the physical memory that is being allocated, you will get a certain number of page faults. But now when you increase the number of page frames in the physical memory to say 15, then we expect the page faults to decrease because there is more space in the physical memory to accommodate more number of pages. So, this is what is expected generally. So, this is a graph that shows the general expectation of how the page fall should decrease when the number of frames is increased. So, we will now understand what this first in first out paging algorithm is. So, this first in first out page replacement algorithm is the simplest one. That is, uh, whichever uh, page was first brought into the main memory will be selected for replacement first or that will be the page that will be brought out of the main memory first. So, to understand or to remember or to know which page was first brought into the main memory, with each page a time is attached. So, whenever a page is brought into the memory, a time is also attached to that page at what time to know at what time it was brought into the memory. So, now when you are choosing a page for replacement among the number of pages that are present in the physical memory, you choose the one which has got the earliest time or the oldest page will be selected. This can also be implemented by using a first in first out queue. So, if you use a first in first out queue to hold all the pages in memory, the one which comes earlier will be in the head of the queue. Whenever a page arrives or it is brought into the memory, it is added to the tail of the queue. So, the one that is chosen for replacement will be the one at the head of the queue because those were the ones which came in earlier or those are the older pages. So, look at this example, a reference string is shown 7, 0, 1, 2, etc. and so on. This is the sequence of memory references that have been made. And we will see how FIFO page replacement is done for this particular memory reference string. And here we assume that there are only 3 frames in the physical memory. 
So, with 3 frames and with this memory reference string, how does FIFO page replacement work? So, initially it is assumed that all the 3 frames are empty. So, the first reference is to page 7 and page 7 is brought in because there is a free frame. And the next reference is to page 0. Page 0 is also brought in because there is another free frame. And the third reference is to page 1. There is a free frame here. So, 1 is brought inside and hence 1 is accommodated. Now, the next reference is to page 2. But you see that there is no page frame or there is no frame in the physical memory which is free. So, we need to choose one which has arrived or which had come in earlier and that has to be chosen for replacement. So, between this 7, 0 and 1 among 7, 0 and 1 we find that 7 was the one which came in first. Hence, 7 is removed and 2 is brought in or 7 is replaced with 2. Now, the next reference is to 0. But 0, you find that the page 0 is already present in the physical memory. Hence, there is no page fault. You use that page as such. The next memory reference is to 3. 3 has to be brought in because 3 is not present in the physical memory. So, be, among between these 2, 0 and 1, you need to find out which one came the earliest. So, 0 was the one which came in earlier compared to 2 and 1 and hence 0 is removed and 3 is brought in. And next reference is for 0. Again between this 2, 3 and 1, 1 was the one which came earliest and hence 1 is removed and 0 is brought in. And then reference to 4, between 2, 3 and 0, 2 was the one which came in earliest. So, 2 is replaced by 4. And then for to bring in 2, 3 is removed and 2 is brought in. And then again 3, 3 is not available. So, you remove this 0 and bring in 3. And then you have a reference to 0. So, 4 was the earliest among between uh, 4, 2 and 3 and that is replaced by 0. And then you have 2 and then you have 3. 3, there is already, it is already available here. So, there is no page fault for this 3 reference. For 2 reference, again there is no page fault. It is present in the physical memory. And for reference 1, you need to replace 1 among 0, 2 and 3 and of these 3 pages, 2 was the one which came in earlier. So, 2 is replaced with 1. So, you have 0, 1 and 3 and then you have a reference to page number 2. Page number 2 is not present here. So, there is no space. You need to choose 1 for replacement. 3 is chosen and 2 is brought in. Then the next reference is to page 0. Page 0 is already available. So, no page fault. The next reference is to page 1. Page 1 is already available. There is no page fault. Then 7 between 0, 1 and 2, 0 was the one that came in earliest and hence 0 is replaced with 7. Then again to bring in 0, 0 not available inside. So, 1 is replaced with 0 and then again reference to 1 between 7, 0 and 2, 2 was the one that came in earliest that is replaced with 1. So, totally here you find that uh, the number of page falls is 15. There's 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 and 15. So, totally 15 page falls occurred in this FIFO page replacement algorithm. So, but the performance of FIFO algorithm is not that very good. Uh, they look at the, if you look at the two extreme cases, one is they could have been an initiation, initialization module that was used long ago, but not used now. And hence, we assume that we think that the page, in, page that came in first can be replaced because it came in earlier, it is not being used now, why not replace it? That was the argument that is going for first in first out algorithm. But the negative argument is that say if there is a variable that was initialized long ago, but it is still in use, then if you choose that page for replacement, 
then there will be a page fault immediately. So, so even if uh, that case, even if in that case, if you are removing a page that is constantly being used, that is continuously being in use, uh, even in that case, it will only slow down the performance, it will not cause incorrect execution. But there is one problem with this first in first out algorithm. Generally, when you try to increase the number of frames allocated for a process, then your page fault should decrease, the number of page faults should decrease. But in the case of uh, first in first out algorithm, it does not happen that way. So, in first in first out algorithm, say you take this particular reference string and if the number of frames is 3, so 1, 2, 3 is brought in, then while 4 is brought in, 1 is replaced with 4, then for the next one, uh, you remove 2 and bring in 1 and for the next 2, you remove 3 and bring in 2 and for 5, you remove 4 and bring in 5. 1 it is a hit and for 2 it is already available, 3 you remove 1 and bring in 3, for 4 you remove 2 and bring in 4, 5 is already available. So, here the number of page falls when you have 3 number of frames is 1, 2 and 3, first time all this will be empty and hence uh, 3 page falls here, then 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, so you have 9 page falls. Suppose if you increase the uh, number, of pa number of frames to 4. So, you have 4 frames now, so this is how you bring in, uh, bring in and replace the, uh, replace the pages, here you find that the number of page falls is 10. So, here you see that when the number of page frames is increased from 3 to 4, the number of page falls gets increased from 9 to 10, but we do not generally expect this. So, this problem or this anomaly is called Bellady's anomaly which is uh, prevalent in FIFO page replacement. So, when you have more number of frames, we expect to have less page faults generally, but in FIFO replacement, when the number of frames is increased, the number of page faults is also increased. So, this uh, graph just shows how the number of page faults vary with increase in number of frames. So, here you see that when the number of frames is 1, the page faults is 12, 2 also page faults is 12. For 3 it decreases to 9, for 4 it increases to 10, again for 5 it decreases to 4 and to 5 and for 6 it maintains at 5 etc and so on. So, uh, the general idea or the general thought we generally we have that uh, increasing the number of frames will uh, decrease the number of page faults does not happen with FIFO uh, page replacement algorithm. So, there is an anomaly in FIFO page replacement algorithm. Now, we will summarize uh, whatever we have learnt in this module. Uh, we learnt what uh, is the need for page replacement. So, when you try to bring in a page from the secondary storage device into the main memory, uh, if there is no place or no free frame in the main memory, then you need to replace some other page or you need to swap out some page from the main memory to the secondary storage device and then bring in this page. So, there is a need for page replacement and there are a number of ways in which you select which of these pages in the main memory can be moved outside. So, that is called page replacement algorithm. So, you have a number of ways and you have a number of page replacement algorithms and in this module we learnt what first in first out page replacement algorithm is that is whichever page was brought into the physical memory first will be chosen for replacement because it was a page that came in earlier, maybe the work for that particular page would have been over and hence uh, that particular page is chosen for replacement. But the problem with this first in first out of FIFO page replacement algorithm is that it suffers from Bellady's anomaly that is when you increase the number of page frames in the physical memory you expect the number of page falls to reduce, but that does not happen with uh, FIFO page replacement algorithm. When you increase the number of uh, frames in the physical memory, the number of page falls also increase in FIFO. So, this is what we learnt in this module. The references, acknowledgement, thank you.